Welcome, welcome, welcome. 12.20 a.m., 98.1 FM. And I've had uh, quite a quite a few weeks. I've been around and around and around, and Patty's been coming on once in a while, and we've also had a couple of reruns, so but we're live back, and we're going to be live for quite a while now. Uh, we're back! We're back. Is that that sounds kind of like that creepy uh, <laughs> horror flick from uh, Amityville Horror or something? I don't know what it was from, but it was something. <laughs> so I'm back. Um, as you know, uh, the S. Brian website has been up and running now for a few weeks. We're signing up some experts. We have expert match. Uh, anyone that doesn't know about S. Brian, S. Brian is a free business resource that helps business owners solve business problems. And the way they can solve their business problems, they can ask a specific business question to the business community. They can ask it to an expert that they can match up with. Uh, and each expert has videos, ebooks, blog posts, and even webinars to teach people about a business issue. So if you have a business problem, even if you're going into business before and you've never set up accounting records, or you've been in business for 10 years and you've always relied upon an accountant and couldn't figure it out, you can go to Ask Brian and figure that out. If you've never used Facebook uh, advertising or Facebook at all, you can go on online to Ask Brian and figure out how to use it. We'll show you how to use it, and there is no cost to you. So it's a great resource, and I encourage everybody to use it. Ask Brian Radio with my co-host Patty. Each week we try to interview either an entrepreneur or CEO of some type of a startup or new business out there that can help local business owners in, in our community and help them solve business problems. It's just an extension of our Ask Brian uh, website, and that's askbrian, A-S-K-B-R-I-E-N dot com. Patty, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Nice to have you back. It's I'm, been, I'm, uh, I'm glad to see that. I, I thought you said, like, God damn it, he's back the, again. What did you just say on air? <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we erase that? <laughs> um, anyways, yes, it's good to be back. We are, uh, the two of us back here, we are, um, again, the website is, is a, I love the fact that it's a free resource, and it's for business owners by business owners, um, which is which is great. And uh, every show, like you mentioned, we, we, we tap into various expert speakers, so if you've missed any past episodes uh you can go to the hometownstation.com website and find the ask brian link you can listen to all the past episodes which are are really great um we are facebook live so if you have any questions for our guest today you can jump onto the khts page on facebook live and you can also download the app at your app store just go to khts and you can listen live anywhere in the world with the app so that's all cool so patty you know, my understanding is you had two guests the first one was charles lee that was what three or four weeks uh, ago. Charles Lee is a uh, is a CPA. He's also um, a, a credit tax specialist out here in Santa Clarita. He was a wonderful show. Um, if you own a company out here and you don't know much about tax credits and what's available to you, I strongly suggest you listen to that show. And then last week I had Steve Korn out here, who is the owner of Newhall Escrow, and we. St- we spoke about his success and how he got to where he is. Also shared some information with um, his leadership courses that he teaches over at COC. I'm not as a teacher, but as a does it on the side with the, the youth there. And we just spoke about entrepreneurship and y- the young adults and what they're doing these days and how magnificent they are. Um, so both shows were a lot of fun. They were very good. Now, now, is that escrow for both real estate and business or just real estate? Just real estate. New Hall Escrow is out here on Lions. Uh, they just had their 55-year anniversary. Wow. And, uh, yes, it's a multi-generational owned company. And uh, they do, yes, real estate out here in the valley. Well, they, they do it everywhere, but they're located out here in the Santa Clarita Valley. Well, and uh, – we have a wonderful guest today, and it's going to be a very, very interesting topic, something that I am not very well familiar with, and I'm really expecting to learn a lot, and hopefully everyone else can learn a lot. It's in the cryptocurrency area, which for most people refer to that as Bitcoin. Bitcoin is one of the cryptocurrencies, but we're going to let Daryl explain the whole thing from A to Z. Daryl, are you there? I am. I am. How are you doing? Okay. How are you? So first of all... Um, uh, before we dive into the subject of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, let me get a little bit about your background. So how long have you been, or what did you do prior to cryptocurrency Bitcoin? So prior to cryptocurrency, I worked for Google uh, on the Google Play Store, Google Play Store verticals, and third-party application support. Uh, I was with them for about a year. Uh, I was in the operations side of things. 
Um, and then, uh, you know, when I left Google, this cryptocurrency opportunity presented itself, and uh, we've just been running with it ever since, and very excited to be in the space, very excited to be innovating in the space. And what does Google uh, Play? Google Play is if you have an Android device, that's where you get all of your applications from. So it could be the Google Play actual application. It could be Google Play Music, Google Play uh, Books. It could be uh, Boom Beach or, you know, Pokemon Go. Uh, it could be any of those third-party applications that are on there. Um, we were still required to support them. So having a working knowledge of the Google Play Store definitely helped us get to where we are right now, uh, having an Android application out there. And, and what is the name of the company you're working with now? So the name of our company, it's a Nevada-based corporation. It's called Crypto Cash Hub Incorporated. And the brand that we're launching or the brand that we're bringing to market is Coin Fierge. Hmm. And, and are, are, you, are there other founders or are you, you one of the founders or you just came on board? I'm one of the founders. Uh, we have two other founders that are on board. We had a, a third, uh, another founder that had st stepped away from the project. Um, and then we have uh, about 13 other employees attached to this project. And when did you start? We launched Crypto Cash Hub uh, concept on June 5th, 2017. And explain to our listeners what, what this uh, crypto type currency is, because not everybody understands. It's something so, that you hear a lot about, but we don't, yeah, go ahead and explain Yeah, that. I mean, it's, it's interesting because a lot of people know uh, Bitcoin or they've heard the buzzword and they don't really know exactly what it is. Um, and to understand what cryptocurrencies are, you have to understand what a blockchain transaction is. Um, and so it, with a blockchain transaction, you're essentially removing the middleman and allowing a uh, peer-to-peer transaction um, that then gets verified uh, by some third-party sources in a proof of consensus format or in a group format that they agree of that information, um, and then it gets recorded into a public ledger. And so with cryptocurrency, that's a financial transaction that gets recorded into the public ledger. Right. And so before what's you go important... Any, I, don't mean to what's interrupt, that? I don't mean to interrupt, but before you go any further, I'm still having a little difficulty, and I don't know that everybody else... So go over a little bit more about this blockchain. Blockchain is another word that everybody's heard, but try to go over like a hypothetical of an example of how that would work. And I think that might be easier for our listeners and myself and others to understand. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's say I want to send you some information. Now, I, we don't work for the same company, and we might not trust each other, but we need to send, I need to send information to you. So I'm going to put out that information, and you're going to put out that you want to accept that information. And this is all through computer language with public and private keys. Um, and then a third party comes in and verifies that all of that information is accurate. If they're okay with that, then they put it out there for a further level of confirmation or verification by other independent computers or in entities. And once there's at least a consensus vote or a 51% uh, vote on there, you're able to process that transaction into the public ledger. Once that transaction is uh, confirmed, it can never be erased. It can never be manipulated. Um, it can never be changed. And, and so to put it in a real world kind of perspective, think about a, a third world country property rights. Um, you've got paper documents that back up who owns property, and then a dictator comes in and destroys all of their paperwork, and then nobody knows who owns that property. With this blockchain technology, that cannot be refuted. The owner of that property is, is written in and it can never be changed once it's in there. Why can't it be deleted? Because you've got a proof of consensus that says that it's there. So in order for someone to try to manipulate that transaction. They would have to get to it prior to that having that consensus or those confirmations and do a malicious attack on the server. And that, that's happened before um, with, you know, the 51% attacks, but that's getting into some like hacking things and um, it's not as easy as it sounds. Well, let's go over something that I think, especially my co-host and I have a little bit better understanding because we're more tangible people. So it sounds to me like this verification in, in our world would be an escrow company, right? They're verifying yep. whether or not... All or a title I, company. Or title. Well, yes, yeah, slightly different, though. But in an escrow, they're, they're documenting that, okay, you have a buy agreement, buy-sell agreement between two parties. Uh, X, is the, uh, X is the buyer. Y is the seller. Uh, uh, y, y, the seller has, uh, you know, has received the money, and the buyer has funded the account, and so, therefore, they release the, the title transfer, et cetera. That's, that's something more tangible. So in a blockchain, okay, uh, we've got 
two independent parties, the buyer mm-hmm. and seller, okay? And then we've got this verification. The difference here is in escrow, we have one company that receives a small fee, and they verify to make sure everything's correct. What I'm a little confused about is it sounds to me like it's kind of like a vote. I could get 500 of my friends to say, you know, hey, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, release the funds to me, Peter, because uh, I know the transaction went through, and I get 500 people to sit there and say the funds went through. That doesn't mean to me, because it's not tangible, that it went through. It sounds to me like that's that to me is a difference that I see. Well, what you're describing right there is a centralized network or a centralized blockchain as opposed to a decentralized blockchain. Okay. And so it's important to remember that you don't necessarily need to have a proof of consensus or a decentralized nature to have a blockchain. There are companies that are launching internal blockchains where they control all of the nodes and then they have control over what information gets recorded into the blockchain, like a Ripple or uh, what's just been uh, shown about uh, Bitcoin Cash, for example. So um, how, do you, how do you protect yourself if the transaction is verified by these people but it never actually occurred? Because the transaction on a decentralized network would never have that level of confirmation. You would never be able to get that many people to confirm on a network that large. You got to understand, 500 people on a network, on the Bitcoin network, is not a big number. You would have to have a solid swing. And then at that point, they would see that attack coming. You would see that all of these nodes have coupled together to, to attack the transaction. Um, and so there's, there's safety measures in place. Uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen. And there's a lot of uh, encryption that goes into making sure that that doesn't happen. So, Daryl, I have a question. When I was researching Bitcoin months and months ago, um, and I probably completely misunderstood the the blockchain, I, I sort of interpreted it like it, for lack of better words, it replaced the bank, the, 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 the banks that hold the monies, and, and the banking industry in itself would... Uh, um, or they didn't like the blockchain technology. Tell me where I'm, what, what, what I'm missing. <laughs> You're spot on. You are spot on. So again, wow. back to a, a third world or emerging economy. Cryptocurrency and blockchain is the bank is banking for the unbankable. Okay, I remember reading. Is that, that? Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So you have we have banks. We have access to banks all all over the place. I mean, even on the corner that I live in, there's two of my bank on either corner. Um, but it's not the same thing in Africa and in parts of Asia and in Central and South America, where if you have an Internet connection and a smartphone, that's now become your bank. And that informa- that currency can't be manipulated. And so it's huge for areas that don't have uh, banking institutions like we have. Now, where it seems like it's a threat is to the banking institutions that we have because they see it as a uh, competition. They see it as a uh, them losing their competitive advantage of being able to take middleman fees and, a, a, you know, American Clearinghouse uh, times and things like that that happen with our normal exchange of currency don't happen with cryptocurrency. There is no delay. Like if you're using um, uh, Venmo and you send your money to your bank account, you're literally going to wait three days to get that money out of your bank account. If you use PayPal, you're paying them 7% to move that money. With cryptocurrency, you don't have any of that. Hmm. And and for those that wonder, Bitcoin, it's not a tangible physical product. It is not a coin. People think that it's a, it's a physical coin when it's not. It's just a, it's a digital currency. It's there, Correct. You, you cannot put but your in it's, it. Essentially, all of our money is digital these days. I mean, how many people use paper currency versus how many people use their banking, um, you know, banking uh, uh, online apps? Their, or the debit card and just, yeah. Uh, yep. First of all, you're listening to KHTS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Why do you say it can never be manipulated? As an attorney, I hate the word never, and so I can't imagine <laughs> that it can never be manipulated. That blockchain has never been hacked in 10 years that it's been out there. Okay, so is hacking the same as manipulation? 100%. Yeah. Yep. Once it's scribed into the public ledger, it's permanent. Where is this public ledger? Well, you can go to blockexplorer.com and see some of the blocks. I mean, there's lots of different ledgers. Each cryptocurrency has its own ledger. So Bitcoin is a different ledger than Ethereum, which is a different ledger from the cryptocurrency that we develop, um, and so on and so forth. And there's 17,000 different cryptocurrencies out there right now. So let's talk about that. The the, the main one that we hear about is Bitcoin. And then there's yep. Litecoin, which is an alternative type cryptocurrency and mm-hmm. uh, there's a couple other ones I remember hearing about how how do we know 
which one makes sense, which ones are going to be here today, gone tomorrow. Um, there's so much to filter through, and, and I would imagine some have come and gone already. There, there have been. A lot of them have been uh, biting the dust lately. And, and what I tell people when you're looking at coins is to look at the tech and look at the team and look at the use case. Can you see this technology working? Can you see this team executing this technology? And can you see this technology having a use case once it's finished? If it gets to those three, then you might have something there. But even then, I'm still skeptical uh, of a lot of the projects that are out there. Um, so due diligence, uh, you know, if somebody's telling you something that sounds like it's too good to be true, it's absolutely too good to be true. There's no get rich quick here in cryptocurrency. Um, there is no, uh, you know, 2%, 3% daily returns here in cryptocurrency. So it's just important to, to apply the same tactics you would with any other investment. And don't get, uh, you know, blindsided by gains, 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 and uh, lose what's important. And that's due diligence in these projects. So, so today, um, Bitcoin is at 7,400. Uh, a few months back, it was 19,000. What, what made mm -hmm. that drop? What, what happened? So we had a run-up uh, in the late last quarter of 2017. And essentially, uh, I noticed that it was right around uh, Thanksgiving. You know, a lot of people went home, talked about what they had been doing, and we saw a massive spike. Um, and then we saw some things that happen every year in the cryptocurrency world. Uh, which is, you know, the American holidays and then the Chinese New Year. And those are events that take capital. People take capital out for those. People save all year to buy Christmas presents. People save all year to go on these, you know, holiday vacations to see their families. And so a lot of the market cap left. When that happened, the instant uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt articles started to come out, which then drove the price even further down. People that, like me knew that there was, this wasn't the end. I, it, it was a correction. It was because it got ran up so fast, and all that money was all new money. All the money from, say, 6200 up to 19000 was all people that didn't really know what cryptocurrency was. They got involved because their friend got involved. They got scared when they started to see it go, and they pulled their money out. And the people that stayed in it are the same people that were in it prior to the run-up, prior to you know uh, the Jamie Dimon comments and things like that back in like September. So... To look at the value of it, you have to see the market caps. You have to see uh, the value of the market cap going from Bitcoin to Ethereum, going from Bitcoin to altcoins, um, and kind of look at the market that way. Okay. So if somebody wants to dabble in, for lack of better words, the Bitcoin world, um, obviously it's a... I think cryptocurrency. But... Okay. Yeah, better, better said. Cryptocurrency. Um, it's a full disclosure. It would be... A, an investment that is like any investment, it's risky and it, it, mm -hmm. it can be risky and uh, don't put anything in there that you're not willing to lose, which is like we yep. tell people in the stock market. Um, yeah, absolutely. Same thing as a Reg D or any of your declarations that you would do. Right. Um, so what does your firm do for, I mean, can, can a consumer come to you and say, I want to get involved with crypto, what do I do? And they buy from you or how does that work? We started off with Crypto Cash Hub Incorporated to help people get started without getting ripped off. And we still have that resource out there for anybody. It's absolutely free. You don't have to spend any money on it. We have a forum. Uh, we have blogs that we've written. And when we first started, we were giving away free Bitcoin uh, for no sign up and no obligation. Uh, if they want to purchase some of our coin, they can download our application uh, and go to the buy coins feature that's in there. Um, we are SEC compliant under Reg D504. So we have some uh, declarations that are in there prior to being, being able to purchase them. But it's the same as if you were to, you know, buy any kind of uh, shares in a company and deal with anybody that had presented like a PPM or anything like that. There's going to be, you know, that you can lose. This is, could be a total loss. You need to make sure that you are prepared. And I think that's one of the big differences that people don't understand is all these investments in stocks and public companies, they still have the same risk. It's just there was not a regulation to make you have to declare those risks. So we went ahead and followed the rules of all the other companies, knowing that regulation would come down to protect ourselves from getting in trouble. Are there any regulations on cryptocurrencies that you're aware of? Uh, in the United States, the only thing that I know about is the capital gains tax that's been passed. Um, and other than that, there's not, uh, from my knowledge, um, other than the Southern District of New York has some pretty stringent laws about operating Bitcoin businesses and cryptocurrency businesses. Um, and then there's reverse regulations like Nevada that passed a Senate bill that allows us to operate tax-free, license-free, regulation-free. 
Um, you know, Wyoming has a similar bill. So, I mean, it's, it's the opposite of what you would think. It's, it's they're encouraging this innovation. Um, they're encouraging companies to start up and they're giving them all the leeway they can or runway. Is it, are there any countries that you're aware of that have any regulations? China. China, I believe, has all out banned cryptocurrency and India has some pretty stringent regulations as well. Um, I believe it's a, they don't allow exchanges, um, but I'm not up to date on that, to, to be fair. Okay, Joe, we have about two minutes. Uh, share your website again, please, for our listeners who just tuned in. Absolutely. It's coincierge.com. So that's C-O-I-N-C-I-E-R-G dot C-L-U-B. Dot com. Okay, fantastic. We're going to come back in just a couple of minutes. You're listening to your hometown station, KHTS, 98.1 FM, AM 1220, The Ask Brian Show. We'll be right back. If you'd like to take your business up a notch, take a look at Elite Magazine. Linda and Mo Hafizi, owners of our Valley's two leading magazines, the Magazine of Santa Clarita and Elite. I'm so proud of Elite. It allows your advertisement to stand out. We distribute Elite to 50,000 homes and businesses. You'll find us in 1,900 local hotel rooms. Discover how Elite Magazine can help your business. Call 294 294- 4444. Superior quality is second nature to us. Just ask our advertisers. My favorite restaurant in Santa Clarita? Salt Creek Grill, of course. Great food, neat atmosphere. For a business lunch or romantic dinner, I'll always go to Salt Creek. Hi, I'm Greg Amsler, owner of Salt Creek Grill. We have created Salt Creek to provide you with the most comfortable and inviting restaurant in Santa Clarita. Enjoy fresh mesquite grilled fish, aged steaks, and the best chops imaginable. There's entertainment every Friday and Saturday night, and we have the best Sunday brunch in town. Salt Creek is on Town Center Drive in Valencia. You worry because your mom and dad aren't as active and are finding it more challenging to live on their own. The answer? Premier Assisted Living Community, Oakmont of Santa Clarita, now leasing. Located on Newhall Ranch Road, Oakmont of Santa Clarita, bringing comfort and luxury to assisted living. Your parents can enjoy five-star amenities and panoramic views in a world-class community. No other assisted living community has this kind of luxury and amenities in our valley. Visit oakmontofsantaclarita.com. Weekends are now exciting in Santa Clarita as Persia Hookah Lounge hosts its House of Entertainment every weekend night from 8 to 11. Thursdays feature a DJ on the hookah patio. Stop by Fridays for performances by Belly Dancer of the Universe winner Jasmina or Saturdays to hear great local live bands. Persia Lounge also caters for both homes and businesses starting as low as $8. Discover Persia Hookah Lounge on Main Street where it's all happening in Old Town Newhall. Persia-Lounge.com Afternoon, Los Angeles. <laughs> I am back. Twelve twenty a.m. and ninety-eight point one FM. Scary. Daryl, you there? Hello. Daryl, can you hear us? Did you put him on? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yep, yep. Sorry, oh. I had it muted. Lost you for a second. Okay. okay. <laughs> anyway, so um, that was a lot of information you gave us, um, and a lot of information for our users. So, um. Which is the, do you have a specific currency that your company has, or, or do you do multiple currencies? We do. Yeah, we have our own coin, uh, the Coin Sears Club coin. It's trading on the Waze Exchange at $0.09 cents right now. And so um, I don't want to get into the creation and complication of that, but so uh, anybody can use this currency? Yes, at the vendors that we have right now in Las Vegas and any additional vendors that we add. Uh, or if anybody else building off the Waves blockchain decides to make a point of sale solution, then that would integrate into that as well. So, so um, vendors, just like Visa Card, right? They will choose whether or not they want to accept your coin or not. Or, and I, Correct. I hate to use the word coin because it's not a coin, but um, this currency. So basically, I, I could sit there and say, I'll take the Visa Card, the American Express Card, the Bitcoin Card, the Venmo Card, the PayPal. And, uh, and and your currency, the concierge coin. Correct. And so with, at that point, we would actually handle Bitcoin and the Coin Sears Club coin through our application because there'd be no need for another uh, application or point of sale strictly just for the Bitcoin because we can handle Bitcoin uh, on our end. And, and your, is your application the concierge coin or is it a different different app for that? Yeah, it's the Coin Sears wallet. 
So we have the CoinShares Club coin, the CoinShares wallet, and the CoinShares Pro. CoinShares Pro is our point of sale. CoinShares wallet is our wallet. And CoinShares Club coin is the currency that we created. So I understood the wallet to be something where when you, after you've purchased the coin, you transfer it to the wallet where it's secure, right? You're not, Correct. That's not a place where you trade the, 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 the currency. You just store it there. It's like you're literally your physical Correct. wallet. It's your piggyback. Yep. Yeah. There's no trading on our application, but there is peer-to-peer -peer so that you could send it to someone if you needed to. Okay. So let's say um, I want to buy a General Motors car. Let's say I'm going to buy a uh, Chevy Camaro 2019. Okay? And let's mm -hmm. say they've accepted, they've agreed to accept the concierge coin. Okay? How does that yep. work? Hey, so I... I just got to stop you. It's Coincierge. So it's C-O-I-N. Yeah. So it's, it's, and we've trademarked that. Um, so just so that everybody knows, it's Coincierge is the name of the company. Okay. So Coincierge. So I want to buy that car, and I'm a, uh, I want to buy the Coin Concierge, and I want to then buy my General Motors car. And General Motors is a vendor on your network. Okay. How does that mm -hmm. work? So the, let's say the car is $20,000. How does that work? So if you have $20,000 worth of the coin, which, again, the coin is at $0.09 cents right now, you would go there. They would ring up that amount in 20000 You would pick the currency that you wanted to use. You're using the Coin Sears Club coin. They would create a QR code. You'd scan it. It would transfer the funds, and the transaction would be done. It's transferred to U.S. dollars? or No, it would be transferred to them in the currency, in the, in the crypto asset that they're deciding to accept. I see. And can the vendor then switch it right into a currency like U.S. dollar or the euro, or do they have to... As long as the coin is liquid, as long as there's liquidity on the exchanges, like a, like a Bitcoin or Ethereum, then absolutely. What determines the liquidity? It just depends on... Uh, so liquidity is, you know, being able to get fiat currency out of the coin and on a demand capacity, meaning you might have 20000 you want to get all 20000 out right now. Now, there's some coins that trade and have trading volume and, and values, but they can't clear that level of, of uh, volume. They can't clear a 20000 transaction or a million-dollar transaction. So the, the definition of liquidity is being able to cash out at any time uh, for the amount of coins that are in the market. So is it a fair comparison? I'm, I'm thinking of trying to equate it to um, whether you're buying an option or, or a stock. If it's a very, very low-volume traded stock – and there isn't a lot of volume on that, and you go to sell your 20,000 shares of ABC Company, and there's no interest in that. You can't sell it. You can't unload that. Is that fair to say that's similar to this? Yep, yep. It's, it's essentially there's no demand for it. You're absolutely right. Okay. So how can a local... Okay, we're in a local community here in Newhall, all right? Uh, mm hmm and let's say the restaurant down the block wants to uh, uh, get involved with your currency. So they would contact you and ask for the point of sale product, which is the – is that – Concierge Pro. Coin Concierge Pro, okay? And so then that would be – now, uh, and with that con uh, Coin Concierge Pro – Coin Concierge. Yeah, it's, it's just one word. <laughs> Does does that include the Visa card, the Mastercard on the on the typical point of sale systems, or is it just yours? Not yet. We're working with a credit card processing company out of Southern California to create those gateways. There's a lot of uh, issues and SEC red tape that we have to deal with before we can move forward. Um, it's in the works, uh, but it's not there. And that's what kind of differentiates a lot of these companies from, say, like a Coinbase that actually has that fiat gateway where they're able to do that. So if somebody were to want to invest in, um, in in this cryptocurrency and they had to choose between Bitcoin, Litecoin, your coin, or any of the other ones, what what do you tell those people that, that yours is, you know... Not What's your that, advantage? Yeah, there. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> our advantage is using state-of-the-art blockchain technology versus some of the uh, older technologies that are out there. Like, for example, Bitcoin's been out for 10 years. It can do seven transactions per second. Ethereum has been out since 2015, uh, and it can do 17 to 20 transactions per second. We can do 250,000 transactions per second on the Waze blockchain. So 
that right there gives us a competitive advantage, but it also gives us a disadvantage because of adoption, because everybody knows of Bitcoin and everybody knows of Ethereum. Or if you know about Bitcoin, you learn about Ethereum. And so it's like a stepping stone kind of thing. Um, so I, I don't want to say one's better than the other right now because we're not at the need for those transaction speeds. We did see a bit of a hiccup in the Bitcoin network over the summer of last year and, and up into the fall. Uh, we also saw some massive issues in December with Ethereum and, and uh, the CryptoKitties incident. Um, but right now, I mean, nobody's really using it to the capacity they need to. So those parameters aren't that important. Um, what are the other competitive advantages that we have? We're a U.S.-based company with a phone number and an address that you can walk into our office. You can call us anytime. We, uh, you know, we have our regulations in place with the SEC, so we're not violating any United States-specific laws. And that's really unique in the crypto space because most of these companies are from uh, other countries and they are trying to do business in the United States, but not you know, file the proper paperwork to do so. Yeah, I remember hearing that uh, you couldn't get a hold of a live person. Yep, at, you can at, here. 949-610-2270. That's our phone number. You can call us anytime. Okay, say that again. Say it slower. 949-610-2270. Okay. Is there a ranking of the uh, of these currencies? So, for instance, obviously, brand recognition, obviously Bitcoin's number one. Ethereum probably is number two, I'm guessing. Yep. I don't know what's number three. Litecoin, is, maybe? Ripple. It, oh, but, yeah, Ripple. But is there a publication or something that's identifying uh, and ranking yep. these? What is that? Yep. Users can go to coinmarketcap.com and get, I would say, a pretty solid understanding of the crypto market. And the reason why I say that is because they only list 1,656 coins, which are the top 1,656 coins, which at least when they applied for listing had $100,000 in daily volume. There's 17,000 crypto assets on our chain alone, but they don't have that $100,000 daily trading volume yet. And so it's a great resource for beginners. It's a great resource for uh, charts on these coins in one place, but uh, understand that it's not the end-all, be-all when it comes to coins. So you're, you said earlier yours is $0.09 cents right now. Correct. Um, when you did your, I know it's not an IPO, obviously, um, but when you launched this, what was what was your price then? So we, this is where we kind of shot ourselves in the foot with this thing. You know, we launched our ICO on Waves versus Ethereum, and we did not do so well. It's because nobody knew about the Waves platform. Mm -hmm. um, and when we did our pre-ICO, it was at $0.07. Cents. When we did our ICO, it was at $0.33. Cents. And when we did our bounty program, it was at $0.40. Cents. But um, we uh, raised most of our capital through private equity uh, and private investments because uh, the ICO round, be, running it from the United States on a technology that was unheard of, did not perform the way we had expected. Hmm. I, I don't even want to get into bounty and all those other things because I think we're going to confuse our listeners. But <laughs> And I want to keep it a little bit more simple. So I want to go back to my original transaction. So I'm going down to the local um, X restaurant down the street, and yep. I and they're they're on your platform, and I'm going to buy my uh, steak uh, and potatoes. I was going to get a burrito, but okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got a steak burrito, please. Um, <laughs> steak burrito, I like it with potatoes in it. Um, <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> All right, so. I'm down the street. I'm getting it now. Um, so I give the guy uh, – what do I give him? A coin? Uh, I don't even understand what I'm giving this person to say that I want to use his point of sale system, presuming that you're already set up with this company in San Diego. Do I give them a card? Do I give them – Nope. How, it's how on your cell phone. It's on your cell it's phone on, on your application. And all you do is open up a QR code scanner that's built into it that says scan code. It's two clicks. You click the burger button at the top, and then you click the scan code button. So it's seven cents, and it comes out to seven dollars. Okay, so I've got to give him one hundred uh, of your currency, correct? Correct. Which fluctuates. So it does. Ours doesn't as much as say Bitcoin um, because there's not as much volatility in our in, in our market. But yeah, it does go up and down. So that chicken burrito or beef burrito with potato in it, which sounds really whatever, um, that could be more or less tomorrow. 
It could be $2, it could be $100, depending on, on how the valuation and the fluctuation of the currency. Assuming you're using that. 100%. Yeah, assuming mm -hmm. you're using yep. that currency. And how you can kind of gauge that is look at how much money's in the market cap, and that's how you can tell. Okay. You're listening to your hometown station, the Ask Brian Show on KHTS, AM 1220 and 98.1 FM. We're talking about uh, digital cryptocurrencies. This is, uh, this is some heavy stuff we got going here. This, well, you know what? It's a topic that we've all heard about. There's been lots of conversations, but very, very few, very few understand it completely, including myself, um, to the point of being able to speak about it with any intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Except for our guest. He, he is. But, but uh, you and I, Peter, are kind of botching this up. Um, but that's why we have. But we're guests, asking questions, right? So, you know, right. That's I think you guys are doing great. That's how we all learn. <laughs> that's how we all learn. Um, it is. It is very interesting. You know, at the end of the day, it's a lot to understand. And as with any investment, um, I always tell people: if you don't understand it, you need to make sure you understand it before you do any kind of investing. And um, it's also, you know, understand the risk. And like we talked about at the top of the hour, don't do anything that you can't afford to lose. Because with anything, there is a uh, risk, and, and cryptocurrency being relatively new, it's something that, you know, we need to completely understand. Daryl, what are you seeking? Are you seeking investors? Are you seeking people to expand the network, vendors to join? Are you seeking people to start using the currency? W w of those three? I mean, I would say all three. I mean, we're always seeking investors. We're on our Series A right now. we have talking to a company called Fundable. Uh, which is an accelerator that's going to get us uh, probably going to be able to get us that funding. Uh, we're always looking for more users that want to use cryptocurrency and and be able to spend these values that they're earning. Um, and then we love vendors that are willing to be out in the forefront of this industry. Um, and uh, so we'll welcome any vendor. It's free to get set up as a vendor. There's no charges. There's no fees on any of the transactions on the vendor side. Um, so that's a true game changer when it comes to point of sale. Um, and we support it, tech support it, phone support it. Uh, so, you know, trainings and all that stuff is covered when you get signed up with us. So how do you make money? We make money off of the transaction fees, which are user generated, which is the standard in the cryptocurrency world. Um, but our fees are 0.1%, which is like so much cheaper than what anybody pays in any credit card type of transactions or for interest rates on credit cards that you have these days. So um, we feel like we're going to be able to corner the market with that business model. Do you think you're going to put credit cards out of business someday? Yes. Yep. Hmm. Our, our business model on our coin is almost identical to the American Express Centurion card, black card, except uh, you don't have to have a million-dollar credit limit in order to get advantage, take advantage of our services. Uh, you only have to buy, uh, what, nine-cent coin as of today, and then you get to take advantage of our services. Interesting. So uh, it'll be interesting to like. I wish I could wiggle my nose and see like ten years from now and see where it'd be like bewitched. It would be yeah. I love please that show. Please do. Um, please do. I'd love to see it. Yeah, that I have be... a chicken and egg question. Okay, <laughs> you're building a platform. Anytime you're building a platform, there's a chicken and egg. Do you want to get more vendors? That's why I asked the question. Do you want to get mm -hmm. more vendors or more users? I would think you need to get more vendors first because until you have enough vendors, yep. there's no demand for the user. Yep, you're absolutely right. We, uh, you know, the, the problem that we solved was the ability to spend cryptocurrency, not the ability to hold cryptocurrency. So you're absolutely right. And uh, how is your, uh, who's the biggest vendor you have currently? Uh, by volume, I would say Goat Sports Bar uh, on Sahara and Valley View in Las Vegas. Uh, follow that one up with Sophia's Gentleman's Club uh, in Las Vegas as well. Okay, and um, so that means that somebody could go to those places now. You said you don't have the POS, so uh, you're just using your phone, correct? Yep, they're just using their phone. The vendor has uh, our version of our point of sale, and they ring everything up. Uh, the users, again, it, it, everything's pretty simple in the application. You go to the menu bar, and you're able to hit scan code, and it pulls it right up. How does the user know that, that they take that currency? They just ask. Well, that's, see, that's where it comes on the vendor side. The vendors don't have to accept all 17,000 currencies. They decide, and then they market which ones they accept. So they'll let you know, hey, we only take Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So you have to push them to take your coin, your currency. Well, no, that's the beauty of this. Our business model allows us to operate no matter what currency you use because our wallet and point-of-sale handle 17,000 different cryptocurrencies. 
So it doesn't matter if you use our coin or not. We'd love for you to use our coin, but our coin isn't necessarily a currency per se. It's a service. So the coin is representative of, of a service that you have. So if you sell your coins, then you don't get that service. So there's a kind of a value system in holding our coins as well. Is there, are you similar to Coinbase? I've heard of Coinbase. Is that? Coinbase, uh, we're, we're not. And the reason why, and I know we don't want to get too, too technical, um, but Coinbase owns your money. While on our platform, you own your money. So that's the difference. And we're not the only ones with this. It's the difference between owning your public, your private keys and not owning your private keys. And uh, that's where we, you know, are the first to market a mobile private key wallet with SHA-256 encryption or, or military-grade encryption on a mobile private key wallet. Hmm. And how do I check my balance? You just open up the wallet. Tells you right in there. It tells you all the coins that you have, the balances that you have right on the home screen when you sign in. Do you find that most people are getting involved with this to use it as a currency or is it to... to uh buy and hold or trade um what's, what's yeah that's that's the issue that i have right now is everybody's trying to make money and, and and trade and buy and hold and they're not looking at it uh for the technology or for the currency aspect of it um and so that's where the adaption really has to come you know there's guys that'll buy a coin knowing that it's not going anywhere but it, they know that it's going to increase in value in their day traders so that's where we need to kind of steer away from and get people looking at technology looking at the actual use cases and wanting to use these coins and tokens for things. As a personal opinion, I see that maybe if it that uh, no more than four or five, and that'd be very high, will probably survive to be successful long term. Would you coins, agree? I agree. Four or five well, coins. I would say ninety five percent will fail. Ninety to ninety five percent will fail. That's my speculation estimate. And what is going to make yours succeed? Uh, the fact that we're transparent, the fact that we don't cut any corners, the fact that we have followed all the laws in our country, the fact that we have some protections in our own area of the country that allow us to operate stronger than, say, somebody in a different state. Um, there's a lot of factors that we've uh, analyzed in building this. Uh, we didn't take quick bucks. We didn't take all money. Um, we've turned down deals before for some solid financing because it wasn't the right fit. Uh, we're doing things the right way, and we want to make sure – that we build this like the Amazon or the Google so that when the bubble comes or when the, you know, industry implodes or what everybody is predicting is going to happen. And I'm not saying it's going to or not going to, but if it does, we want to be able to stand on our own feet. And we've built this company to do so. We're going to take a break, but before we go, who are the two other founders? Uh, Chris Starr and Stephen Taft. And what are their prior backgrounds? Uh, Chris Starr works in casinos. He was in the sports book over at one of the biggest uh, casino companies in Las Vegas. Uh, and he's also a huge car enthusiast and has been in a bunch of different magazines for some of his over-the-top car modified, uh, modified cars that he's done. Uh, and Stephen Taft is a musician. Um, Stephen Taft was uh, financing uh, in the beginning, so he doesn't have as much of a hands-on role with the project. But Chris Starr and I, we see each other every single day. We you know, we talk about this project, we bounce ideas off each other, and we keep each other in check. Okay, we've got to go to break. You're listening to the Ask Brian Show on KHCS, your hometown station, AM 1220, 98.1 FM. We'll be right back. Accesso Technology is holding an interview event on August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Westfield Valencia Town Center. You'll have an opportunity to support Accesso's award-winning ride queuing solution. We're hiring 65-plus entry-level cashiers and ride attendants to work on-site at the Flash Pass operations at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Enjoy flexible hours and free park passes on your days off. Apply now at summerparkjobs.com. Meet our team at the Westfield Valencia Town Center the first weekend of August. Who said work can't be fun? City of Hope is a world leader in cancer research and treatment. And there's a City of Hope community practice location right here in Santa Clarita, eliminating a major barrier in the fight against cancer. Distance to quality care. Santa Clarita benefits from City of Hope's compassionate care and renowned clinical expertise. Find out more at cityofhope.org slash Santa Clarita or call 661-799-1999. Why do people from all over Santa Clarita come to our spa in Canyon Country? Simple. They want the highest quality services at prices that everyone can afford. 
This is Rosemary from Beyond Harmony Med Spa. Read our reviews and know why we won the Ultimate Beauty Awards two years in a row by the readers of Elite Magazine. Come and see how close we really are and experience the level of excellence that our clients have loved for the past 13 years. Go to beyondharmony.com or call 298-8008 today for a free consultation. Facebook Live, you can see that slow motion. Oh. <laughs> Twelve twenty AM, ninety eight point one FM. Two different stations. Is You're listening to Ask Brian and Peter's entertaining. I'm always entertaining. <laughs> so are you. We're talking to Daryl, and we're and is Daryl there? Are Darryl, I am here. Yeah, okay. Thank I God. am here. Topic of conversation today person. is cryptocurrencies. And S- understanding the many facets of. Okay, now I don't know if you know this. Or can provide it to us. What is the total volume of transactions in the last twelve months for your for our coin or for yours? Total volume of transactions for the last twelve months. I don't have that answer right in front of you. Right in front of me, I could pull up the exchange and start pulling data for you if you want. No, I don't want to. I don't want to make it difficult. If you had it off the top of your head, that'd be one thing. We uh, we see about a thousand coins a day get traded on the Waves Exchange for our token. Um, that's an average based off of the entire time that it's been trading, which I believe is from the 28th of February of this year is when it hit the exchange. So how do you brand it? How do, you, how do people find out about you? It's difficult. You know, prior to all these regulations and, and the shutdowns and lockdowns on social media, people were using social media and, and their networks to expand the knowledge of what they were doing. But uh, there's been a huge prohibition on ads on social media regarding cryptocurrencies. And I don't necessarily disagree with that. It's just making it more difficult for us to get the word out for what we're doing and why we switched our focus in marketing to the wallet and the point of sale versus the actual currency that we developed. I think what you saw on social media were a lot of opinions about digital currency and cryptocurrency. So yep, and a lot of scams. And yeah. I think that's the reason why they did it, and I yeah. think it was a good move. Yeah, because people just go to social media and Google and think that what yeah. they read is, is uh, written in stone, and it's not. But, I don't know if you guys have heard of BitConnect, and I'm only mentioning this because it was a massive scam, and it made it up to the fourth on the list of, of coin market cap. Wow. How could it be a scam and get that high? Because people bought into it. Because people believed it wasn't a scam. And the people that bought into it, they got scammed. I did not. I was very smart. I did my research. I stayed far away from that one. Um, and there's been a couple others that came out around the same time that were basically the same source code manipulated over and over again. And so somebody with a a little bit of technical background can go onto the GitHub repository and notice that. Uh, but it's tough if you don't have that skill set. So you need a technical skill set. It's not a financial... Yeah, I would have a technical analyst look at any project before you invest because we're talking about technology, not finance here. But if it's, if, you know, to me, if it's ranked number four, okay, and it's a cryptocurrency, uh, I'm going to think, well, the world has said that it's a, uh, you know, it's an acceptable currency, and if it's trading at ten dollars a share, you know, I, you know, I may want to take a shot and hope that it becomes the next Bitcoin and the next valuable one. So my question is, without a technical background, there's no way for me to figure that out. Well, you Google BitConnect. I'm mean, going to use that as an example because it's been exposed. You Google BitConnect, and even before it was exposed, you would see articles talking about it being a scam or a Ponzi scheme or a you know multi-level marketing scam or one of those type of things which we are not. We do not have any multi-level marketing. We don't have any affiliate links. We don't do any of that stuff. Now, um, and what, what is your function at the company now? Are you handling operations, or, or what is your, your function? I'm the CEO and president. Um, I was the managing partner until we uh, incorporated, and then the title changed. Um, I basically have my hand in everything, but uh, over the last three or four months, I've been bringing on some top talent to off-board responsibilities. Um, especially uh, in the tech side uh, and in the operations side um, and then soon to be in the finance side. Um, and so we're, we're trying to attract more top talent to do so. But, yeah, my hands are pretty much in every part of this project. And you're, you're based in, in Las Vegas or where are you based? Um, we're based out of Las Vegas. We've got a couple people that are, you know, places like Denver and Louisiana, Florida, Virginia, California, but the majority of the, in Tucson, the majority of the team is in Las Vegas, Nevada. The 13 people, are they in, 
in uh, Vegas, or is it? All yeah, that's. I mean, that's who I basically just went through. So um, we've got Beth out in California. We've got Billy in Florida. Uh, I've got Josh out in Virginia. I've got Wayne down in Louisiana. Um, and then uh, besides the the Mexico and Canadian contacts that we have, everybody else is in Las Vegas. And is there a reason why you built your team remotely? We bought. We wanted the best team. We wanted the best talent, and talent uh, doesn't necessarily follow geographical, you know, proximities. So. Uh, when you've got somebody like Beth uh, doing our operations, we want her. She can live on the beach in California all day long. She just does, gets the job done for us. Um, or somebody like Wayne, who's single-handedly putting together the New Orleans blockchain organization for us. Um, he needs to live down in New Orleans. What would, what would you say is your company culture? Um, we, I try to make it very similar to what I felt when I was at Google um, and very welcoming. We're not a suit and tie, although I have a ton of suits and, I do wear them when I need to. We're not a suit and tie company. We're, uh, you know, hang out and grab a beer after work kind of company. Um, you know, we're, we're tight. We're very tight. And you got to understand, we go out of town a lot. Um, you know, me and my CTO, uh, we went to New Orleans and Martha's Vineyard. Uh, Chris and I, uh, we've been out to uh, Miami. Jonathan went to Miami with us. Jonathan and I went to Dallas. So, I mean, there's a lot of uh, living out of suitcases with these guys and a lot of uh, team building and uh, – relationship building that goes on in these events and has the whole team ever been together the whole entire team has not been together you have plans for that i do i do i don't see it as a massive necessity we have weekly uh calls uh on google hangouts where we all get everybody together and talk about what's going on with the business and and if anybody has any issues or concerns or or demands or anything how many people do you think you're going to have in the next 12 months 12 months um, I would say under 100, but I would say pushing that number pretty close. Um, we want to have, we want to have a, basically a body in every city that we're going to be developing along these uh, trade routes that we're doing. And I don't want to get too, too far into that because we've got some pretty stout visions that we're trying to put out. Um, and I don't want to kind of dilute the message that we've got right here, but we're, we're working on some stuff. We've got a patent in the mix, uh, some energy stuff that we're working on and uh, smart cities and things like that. So if people want more information about your company, where can they go? They can go to our website, which is coincierge.club. That's C-O-I-N-C-I-E-R-G-E dot C-L-U-B. And we have, what, about 10 seconds left? Thank you, Daryl. So (laughs) you've been a great guest, and I appreciate it. Uh, There's a lot of stuff there. We may have you back on because I think some of our uh, listeners probably want more information. Thank you very much. I'm I'm all available. Thank you, guys.